Today we're testing out Photoshop's brand new feature to automatically colorize a black and white photo. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and I'm super excited about this latest addition to Photoshop. It's part of their neural filters, which involves basically sending your image into the cloud and having Adobe's AI process this image based on millions of other photos. It's actually pretty good. So today we're gonna to be testing it out on two different examples. So we're starting off with two different sample images, one that's black and white and one that we're going to actually wind up converting to black and white. And then we can test how well this tool does to turn it back into color again. So let's go ahead and start with our black and white image. I'm gonna hit F for full screen. By the way, you can download these sample images on Flurn. Just follow the link right down below. So get to our new tool. We're gonna to go to filter and down to neural filters. Now I will say this is available in Photoshop 2021. So if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, just make sure you update your software, you'll get access to this. It's technically in beta, but we still get access to it, which is super fun. So let's go to our neural filters. And here we're gonna see our neural filters pop up. You can see it's loading because it's actually sending the image into the cloud, which means you have to be connected to the internet in order for this to work. If you turn off your Wi-Fi, no dice. Let's go over here to our beta settings right here in our neural filter. So our beta filters, and we're gonna go down to colorize and let's go ahead and turn that on. And I'm gonna just shrink this down so we can see all of our settings a little bit more compact. And as you can see on the left, it's already colorized the image. And I gotta say from like basically one click to this, I'm pretty impressed. It does a really good job. It's again, it's not exactly what I would, you know, I wouldn't necessarily think, hey, this is a perfect color photo. But let's go ahead down here and see what settings we can actually use because there are a couple of them and it's a little bit confusing. So we're just gonna start with our sliders down here on the bottom. Basically, this is just changing the overall tint of your scene. So you could make it more red or less red. Um, this doesn't have to do with how each individual object is colored. So these sliders, in my opinion, where I'm probably not gonna use them that often. Uh, maybe if you just feel the image is too warm or a little too cool. I don't know, maybe you can make some subtle adjustments, but honestly, that could be done with a curves adjustment layer very easily. What I'm interested in is the technology that is trying to recognize people's faces and then color them appropriately with their image database in the cloud. Okay, down here at the bottom, we have an option for focus color. Now turning this off and on, basically this allows you to focus different areas of the image. And that's what this option is right here. So let's go ahead and click on our color and we can actually say like, okay, let's say this rose here, I wanna make that a red rose. So I'm just gonna go to a nice red and hit okay. And then you can actually just click on the thing you want to be red. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here and it's gonna do its best job to make it red. Um, <laughs> here's where we can see we can adjust the size of the area that it's going to wind up affecting to make it more red or less red. And you can see it's not exactly doing what I want. Maybe I'll try moving this around just a little bit and seeing what it does. You can see if I put it right behind our subject, this area becomes red. If I put it up there, then that area becomes red. If I put it on my subject scarf, uh, then kind of a lot of stuff becomes red. So um, great technology, but I think they still have a little bit ways to go in terms of object recognition. I'm clearly putting this on the rose and it's coloring the background as well. So what's my advice so far? I found that if I just minus this out and like don't even use this, you know, so they have the select your focal point and create a focal point with a color here. It seems to just do a better job without that altogether. So we do have a few different options for how we're going to output this. We can do a new layer, we can do a duplicate layer, duplicate layer with a mask. And I'm just gonna go to new layer here. And then we can choose to just see the effect off and on. It's all, I gotta say, all in all pretty good. Let's hit okay there and analyze our images. Just put it on a new layer so I can turn this off and on at any time. All in all, I gotta say, pretty good job. Definitely a great starting place that we can use. I am gonna show you some things that I would personally do to tweak this to like get it a little bit better than the automatic results. But first let's go ahead and jump into our second image because we actually know what colors those are before we get started. All right, so let's go ahead back into our second image here. Again, you can download these and follow along on flurn.com. Just follow the link below. So this is a great image. We've got people with different skin tones. We've got backgrounds, we've got blue jeans. There's a lot going on in this photo. Let's see how the tool does. 
So first thing I wanna do is just duplicate our layer. Controller command J to duplicate it, okay? We're gonna to go to image adjustments and I'm gonna go do desaturate. And that just takes away all the color. So now we're gonna let the Adobe filters try to add it again. Let's see how it does. So let's go ahead and bring this right over here. Again, filter down to neural filters. Let's just open this up here. It takes a second to kind of send your image to the cloud. So we're gonna to go to our beta filters and then over here to colorize, let's go ahead and just turn that back on. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. So again, we can see, I gotta say, as far as like recognizing skin tone, it did a pretty good job here. It applied, you know, what I would consider relatively, you know, decent skin tone to both of my subjects. It kind of missed their, you know, tummies a little bit. This person has skin on their face and, and not over here. And then blue jeans, a uh, little bit of a miss here as well. But again, still a pretty good job. Here you can see, you know, in testing out this tool, and this is a testing video, right? It's a brand new feature in beta. I was like, okay, cool. Can I just like click a color and then select the blue jeans and it'll make the blue jeans blue. But as you can see, it's, not really doing exactly what I want. I kind of try to bring that down here and say, you know, I, I think they've got some object recognition. Uh, still pretty good, uh, but it definitely needs a little bit of work because, you know, at this point I can just say, make the blue jeans blue, but it, as you can see, it's coloring the background and things like that. So I'm just gonna minus that out and we're gonna go with this as it is. I do recommend uh, popping this onto a new layer. So your output is gonna be new layer. So let's hit okay there. And now it's time for uh, what I would do to actually start improving this a little bit because I do think we have a pretty good base here. It just missed a couple of things. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna just go to my blending modes here. We're gonna go from normal all the way down to the very, very bottom to color. Okay, so I've got a color blend mode selected. Now I can hit B for the brush tool. I can hold Alt or Option to sample colors. And then I can simply just paint right over the areas where like I know I want this person's uh, tummy to be this color because I want it to be basically, you know, really similar to, there we go, just grab that color there. I want it to be similar to the rest of this image, which is fantastic. This blue jean color, I don't mind so much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that down and fill out the rest of these blue jeans. There we go. So you can see this doesn't really take too long. I'm just gonna keep painting it on this person's blue jeans as well. I'm kind of just going with the color themes that the tool provided me with. So I'm not like totally starting from scratch here. Um, Cause I think that's realistic in a situation where you actually would be starting from a pure black and white photo. There we go. Maybe that's just a little bit too saturated there, but all in all, let's see, pretty good. I'm gonna just change this. Uh, let's change our brush opacity down to like 20% for a little bit more of a subtle effect here. There we go. And we'll just kind of paint this in for that shadow area that I didn't think was, you know, kind of working for us right there. And then our background in general, I think we can get rid of, there we go. Let me just make my brush a little bit, uh, bring up my opacity a little bit so I can kind of paint a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna kind of clean up the background color in general. And as you can see, this doesn't really take that long and we were able to make a pretty big difference on the photograph itself. Let me just make sure that those, you know, colors extend through the fingertips. We don't want blue fingertips. There we go. So turning up, let me sure I get this hand too. All right, fantastic. So turning this off and on, you can see we're able to make a pretty big change. I. I think this is a little bit too saturated right there. So what I'm gonna do is just grab our lasso tool and I'm just gonna like select around the area that I think I did too much saturation. I'm gonna hit Controller Command U and this adjust allows me to adjust my hue or saturation just in that area. So you can see I could bump that up or down. There we go, let's just bring that down to where it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in line with everything else. Um, and then, you know what? I think her face is a little too saturated. But again, I can just select that with the lasso tool really pretty quick here. Hit Control or Command U, and then I'm just gonna bring that saturation down just a little bit. There we go, maybe a little bit more. There we go, and that's looking pretty good. And I gotta say, for a minimal effort, this photo is decently well colorized. And for the record, colorizing a black and white photo is super difficult to do. Like there's professionals who specialize in just doing that. It's incredibly difficult. So the fact that we were able to get any of this 
pretty good. Let's go ahead and compare the before and after. So this is kind of like the best result that I was able to get from the colorize tool and then cleaning it up here a little bit. Uh, but here's our before. So this is, you know, everything, you know, this is the color photo as is, and this is the colorize process as it's coming. So as we can see, pretty good. The tool definitely has a ways to go, but we are on the right direction. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years, this tool starts to get really powerful, especially as object recognition gets a little bit better in the cloud. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys think of this new colorize feature? And also, have you ever colorized your own photos? If you do, what are some tips and tricks that you could leave in the comments to help out other people who are trying to get that job done? Because it is a relatively difficult thing to do. Alrighty, thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you in the comments. Bye everyone.